morning, everyone. Happy Easter to you all. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Before we begin our Easter morning prayer, we just wanted to give a few announcements for everyone. Of course, this is not the Easter that we had pictured. We were speaking about that earlier this morning. We would so much have liked to all be together here at St. James today. However, it doesn't affect the truth of what happened on this day in history some 2,000 years ago. The great miracle of God and bringing our Lord Jesus Christ back to life after he was crucified still means for us that death is not the end. And through faith in him, we can rejoice this Easter in the new life he's given us. This morning, we did want to let everyone know that we will continue the services through the lockdown at 9.30 on Facebook Live through Friends of St. John's. And we'll also be filming here the 11 a.m. service uh, from St. James. Although we may have to film on a different day than Sunday, it will all be uploaded for you and sent out via email so you can see it on Sunday evenings. And this day in St. Paul's, many people had donated flowers at our sister church. These were donated to the glory of God for Easter and in loving memory. And I think it would be fitting just to read those names out of flower donations. And St. Paul's is going to be able to deliver those flowers to people at home and to give them some of the Easter joy as well. So flowers in memory of Wilbert, Edwina, and Lee Deshaun, Linda Keel, and Don Butte, Gladys and Raymond Albury. These were given from Lester and Betty Deshaun. Flowers in memory of Alvin and Bertha Strader, Garfield Forrester and the Graves family, given by Ron and Donna Graves. In memory of Paul Murphy by Arlene Murphy. In memory of Suzanne Murray, Pat and Stuart Murray, Therese and George Hepworth by Philip Murray. And flowers in memory of Evelyn Hunter, Reverend Les Thorne, and Patricia Kennedy by Alan Cathcart. Flowers in memory of Ross Goldie by Dorothy Goldie. And in memory of Ron Munnings by Sally Munnings. And finally, in memory of June Hopkins, Lori Hopkins, and Brian Hammond by Carl and Joan Graham. Well, we thank you so much for your flowers. And we know that they will, if not be brightening the church this Easter, they will brighten the lives of some of our parishioners who are not able to come out very easily. Well, at this time, we would like to begin with our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Our soloist is Wayne Thornhill.
The next part of our service is the traditional Easter anthems, which have been sung to signify the, the importance and the meaning of Easter for us for many centuries. The Easter anthems. <clears throat> Lord of all. 
You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn in number 165 in the blue hymn book, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. And they remembered his words 
And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now this was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be to God. God. <clears throat> From my family to yours, we want to wish you Easter joys and every blessing from God. It is a bit disappointing to be unable to gather together in church this Easter. We would love to be able to sing the Easter hymns that we know off by heart. We'd love to be able to hear the, the joyful chatter of our friends and pass the peace like we're used to doing. I love in some of the churches too to hear the bright alleluias from everyone on Easter. And it's hard for all of us not to be in these inspiring surroundings together. But there is a consolation. There is no message in the church year that can put our troubles into perspective like the Easter message. The first Easter was about our Lord Jesus, this amazing carpenter from Nazareth, and about ordinary men and women who follow him who face the most extraordinary trials and losses and yet they saw victory. That means there is hope for each one of us in every circumstance. On the first morning of Easter, Mary Magdalene and Joanna and the other Mary and some other women went to the tomb to embalm the body of Jesus. But they found the tomb empty and two men in dazzling apparel, angels, told them Jesus was not there. He had risen as he had said. So the women went back to tell the apostles, but this was one of the most famous occasions in history when the men did not listen. Now I will resist the temptation to say anything more about that today, but it seemed to those fellows that the message from the women was just idle talk. But it wasn't. And then followed 40 marvelous days in which Jesus was with the disciples, risen from the dead. We need to remember that these were very ordinary people like you and like me. Think of them as you would think of your friends. What if your friends had been witnesses to these things and told you about them? That is the kind of reality that we are talking about in the Easter Good News. After his death, Jesus met some of them individually. He met some of them in groups. He always came and went in mysterious ways, but he was absolutely himself. He spoke to them up close and personal. He ate with them. It seems that he came to and from heaven many times in those 40 days. He would be there with them at one moment, and then he would be gone in the next. So what do these appearances of Jesus mean? Well, first, it speaks to the truth that for him, death was not the end. And for you and I, because of that, to have faith in him, it means death is not the end for us either. It means that heaven, secondly, is not far from us. Heaven is connected with every place that God reaches. We can see that in this Easter Gospel. He reaches to any place on earth. There is no physical distance to cross. One writer that I like so very much and find him so encouraging is Bishop Tom Wright. And he said it like this. Heaven is God's dimension of the created order, where earth is the world of space and time and matter that we know. Normally hidden from sight, heaven is occasionally revealed or unveiled. I love that word, unveiled. Have you ever visited a place on earth that felt so peaceful you felt close to heaven? The people in the British Isles, they speak of those places where the veil is thin. 
between heaven and earth so that you actually feel you are standing in a heavenly place. Well, a place that I've experienced the presence of God, one of them was in the little town of Munster, Saskatchewan. There's a large farm on the outskirts of town and a monastery there. And the monks work the farm and they invite guests to come to the monastery to have a retreat and I've been there a number of times. The gardens there are so peaceful that the birds actually come and sit with you on the garden benches. They'll nestle on your shoulder. They'll chirp away happily as if very, very calm to be in your presence. And also they eat right out of your hand. The peace and the prayerfulness there when that's happening is so strong. These heavenly places on earth even feel as if you're surrounded by angels and the love of the redeemed saints who've gone before us to heaven. And the distance between us and them, it's very minimal in these truly holy places. Now I know some people may say, okay, heaven may be there, but the people who reside in heaven don't tend to come back and forth to speak to us, and I know what you mean. Yet today our faith tells us that God's purpose is for us to be here on earth, living the plans he has for us. That's one of the prayers that we say on Sunday. We want to live the risen life of Christ and bring his life to others. The door to heaven is closed from our side, true enough, because God wants us to focus here and now. But Easter shows us that this distance between heaven, as people think of it as out there, and the earth, the distance is very, very short indeed. J.B. Phillips, he made a wonderful translation of the English New Testament in modern language, very easy to understand, and it brought the Bible alive for, for thousands and thousands of people. This was some years ago, and he was very encouraged by his friend C.S. Lewis, who you know, another famous author. Now, Philip suffered from severe depression, and at times he was very, very low and so discouraged, and one of those times, in his living room, C.S. Lewis appeared to him, sitting in the armchair, very relaxed as he had so often done, and gave him wonderful, inspiring words of encouragement to help him go on. Now this wouldn't seem so unusual, except Lewis had been dead for many, many years when this happened. And J.B. Phillips still spoke about how his friend came to him in his hour of need and spoke to him, and what a difference that made in that awful time in his life. That veil that divides heaven and earth is very transparent. And a visitation from someone in heaven is not as rare as we might think. Not only in the Easter story for Jesus, but the time when Jesus was on the mountain with Peter, James, and John, they saw Jesus talking with two great heroes of the faith who had been dead for a very long time, Moses and Elijah. It just means that heaven is close to us. And this Easter, we want to remember that mystery. And though we can't see into heaven, it is revealed to us in special times like this. Because of the first Easter, when Jesus rose, we know that the distance between God and us is closer than ever. The distance between all of heaven's riches and us has been overcome. The distance that seemed devastating to Jesus' friends and also devastating for us when we lose a loved one has now a very different appearance for us all because we know, we know that death is not the end. We know that our God is here with us, very present to all who live in faith and giving us his joy and comfort and our Lord is here, alive and present for us. Heaven is wedded to earth. We are brought close to God from Easter day, and death is no longer a great enemy. Through faith, you and I are more than conquerors, through Jesus, who loves us all.
in the name of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Now we say together the words of the Easter faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. We continue in prayer with the Collect for Easter Sunday. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may, by your life-giving Spirit, be delivered from sin and raised from death through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> o God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory, forgive our sins, banish our fears, make us bold to praise you and to do your will, and steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we now hear the hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises.
for times of great sickness. As we pray, I'll pause in this prayer and invite you at home, wherever you are, to lift up the names of all those loved ones who we are thinking of today, who are in need of God's healing touch. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, this day we remember the sick and those in need of your healing mercies. O most mighty, merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee to you for comfort. Deliver all, we pray, from their sickness and peril. Give strength, O Father, and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cures, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto the heavenly wisdom, which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now on this Easter day, we give thanks to God for all of his many mercies to us. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we are our worthy servants, servants give, you give you humble thanks, thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, to us and to all whom you have made. We bless, we bless you for our creation, preservation, preservation and, and all the blessings of us in life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to your service and by walking before you with holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to live with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. <coughs>
go forth in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.